What is up, Evil Dead fans? This video is gonna pertain on a lot of the tools and a lot of things that I use to build chainsaws. Uh, my friend, young builder Alex, uh, Alexander to be exact, he wanted to know what I use to build chainsaws. He's gonna start building his own, his first one very soon. So he wanted me to go over a lot, of, a lot of the tools and things that I use. I'm not gonna go over a lot of the metals um, of the making the handles, things like that. I've covered that already. But if you guys need me to go over that, I can do that uh, in a future video. So everything here that I'm gonna show you, the price range to buy everything can brown from $100 to $200 just because, um, let's say you have none of this stuff. But I'm gonna tell you guys where to buy some of this stuff to save you guys some money. <clears throat> First thing for the tools is of course the very very simple screwdriver you're gonna need a flat tip and you're gonna need a Phillips head depending on whatever nuts and bolts you're using let's say you're going with Ash vs Evil Dead and you're using some Allen heads you're gonna need some Allen head keys now to save money if you don't have any of this kind of stuff any you know various sizes things like that the best thing for you to do is to go to a pawn shop and get that stuff uh, just because you'll to buy sets of screwdrivers and things like that is quite expensive if you just need various ones you can pick one up for like 50 cents one up for a dollar here and there at a pawn shop <clears throat> one that you may want to look for is one really long with a flat head whatever tip you need um, it's very handy when you're doing final installation with your top because you're trying to put your top on, you got the side popped off, and you'll have to back up uh, the head of that bolt if you're if the nuts are hanging out on the outside. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways, uh, so you're gonna have to back back it up. And sticking your hand way in there, this will extend, and you can hold it in there and tighten that nut up from the outside. So these long ones are very very handy to have. And I got this with one of my home lights um, for my good friend, uh, <clears throat> Jason Bates, when he gave me uh, his Super 2, which ended up being the Mutant Chainsaw. So look for those, go to a pawn shop, it'll save you a lot, of, a lot of money. Let's say you need five, just random ones, $5 right there, $5. Uh, next thing you're gonna need is, of course, wrenches or sockets. <clears throat> when you, sorry, I'm standing up. I'm trying to reach for this crap at the same time. There I go, moving shit. Anyways, when you get this kind of stuff, if you decide to get like, you don't need to get a huge socket set. You can get a cheap ass socket set from like Harbor Freight for like ten dollars. Uh, it doesn't have to be a massive one. See, this is just a small one, and it works just fine. You don't have to put a lot of torque on anything. Um, but you definitely want a wrench when you're tightening your uh, um, your bar down on final installation, just because if there's not a lot of room to work, you won't be able to get this in there. You'll need a wrench. Same thing, go to a pawn shop to get your wrenches. Just know your size or just get various sizes. Um, so you need five, five bucks. If you need a set of these, just a little, you know, just a little set with a bunch of sockets, you can get a cheap one from Harbor Freight. Um, sometimes you can find them in a bargain bin. At Walmart or your hardware store for five to ten dollars for a whole set you don't have to go uber expensive on that stuff <clears throat> we're building a chainsaw we're not building a mansion another thing you're gonna need <clears throat> various paint brushes for your final paint detailing things like that you can just buy a pack from anywhere um, of various sizes for dirt cheap just make sure you don't get a bunch with really stiff bristles um, the finer bristles are better, the more of the hair kind that are easier to use. <clears throat> it's dirt cheap. Get a pack of them anywhere. Okay. Now, another thing that's really cheap to buy and it's really handy, you don't have to buy this, but I do suggest it, is a little roll of masking tape, especially when you're cutting your chainsaw body. Um, you'll measure everything out and you'll draw it out where you need to cut it. The best thing for you to do, especially if this is your first time cutting up a chainsaw body to get your fine line, is run this across your measurement to make sure you have a guide when you cut it. This is cheap, you can get this for like a buck. A roll of this basically anywhere. Just masking tape, make sure it's not a tape that's stretchy. Masking tape, 
does not stretch, it can give you a nice straight line. So definitely go with just a little roll of masking tape. And see, we're saving money already. Look at that. <clears throat> now, when it comes to glues, a lot of the glues that I use, like I've said before, with my top, the original Gorilla Glue, that's what I use. It works great. I love it. I don't go with any other thing, other glue than this. And if Gorilla Glue you're watching, I'll sponsor you. <laughs> or no, 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 I won't sponsor you. sponsor me. I've used the crap out of your products. Uh, but yeah, this stuff is great. It's really good stuff for your tops. Works great. Um, also, I do sometimes use the kind of gelish clear stuff on small things, especially um, on final installation, tightening bolts and nuts up and stuff. I'll put some on the seam so when it's tightened down, it's got a nice seal. I don't prefer this. It's okay if I have to use it. But what I really like to use with anything is this Loctite super glue, this Ultra Liquid Control, and also the Ultra Gel Control. This shit is magic in a bottle. Now, a little bottle of this is like seven, eight dollars. Depending on where you get it, you can get it sometimes on special at Walmart for like four dollars, three dollars. But I don't like to drive to Walmart and I hate going to that gigantic fucking store. So I go to the hardware store and get this stuff. And, uh, but it works great for any application that you need with your chainsaw. If you wanna glue something down, boom, use this stuff. Make sure it's the Ultra, it has to say Ultra, don't use regular shit, okay? <clears throat> and I use the crap out of that stuff. Trust me, it's good stuff. Okay, you're gonna need also a nice pair of scissors for trimming fine things. Like for instance, when you're cutting your caps. Now, I'll show you guys in a minute things I use to cut caps and various other things. It's nice to trim things up if you need to trim them instead of using a big, huge blade or a Dremel. You could do nice little fine trimming with a pair of scissors, which you can get scissors anywhere. Okay. <clears throat> now, when it comes to cutting metal for your top. Now, I know some people use sheet metal, and what I use is a nice 15-gauge aluminum. This is what I use. It's very forgiving. Very workable. And I use that. Um, some people I've talked to, they use what these are called or they use these, these are called 10 snips. Um, if you're using sheet metal, uh, like a 16 gauge, which is usually what they used to use on uh, automobiles back in the day, it's a really thick metal, <clears throat> you can use these. But the problem is every time you pinch it, you're gonna get a little pinch mark and you're gonna have to hammer that down. So I never use these. Oh, I hate them. I never use them. You don't have to get these. And the reason why I'm showing you this is I'll show you what I use to cut my metal. I use these. Now, you can't just buy these anywhere. These are actually QVC carrot cutters. These are for vegetables. But when these came and I saw them and they said, oh, these, these, are, these can cut metal. I'm like, really? These suckers have never been in my kitchen. I've used these on all my chainsaws, and I'll give you an example. Now, right here, we got a piece of that aluminum, right? Cuts it just right. These are dirt ass cheap on QVC. If you can find them, get them. I've used them on probably the last six chainsaws, and they still work great. And that's what I use to cut my aluminum. Um, they're nice. I don't have any kind of give or any kind of struggle with them. They work great. They're, all, they're on QVC. And these are meant to cut vegetables. They have never cut a carrot or a piece of celery in its life. It's only, only cut metal. They're good. It, they're great. I love them. Let's get into <clears throat> sandpaper. Now, when you buy sandpaper, it's good not to go cheap on sandpaper. If you buy cheap sandpaper, that's exactly what it is. You go to a hardware store, and say you get one meant for wood and it says 10 times longer to life. Well, it just means it's 10 times longer to life than the piece of shit sandpaper you could have got at Harbor Freight. What I suggest when getting sandpaper, get automotive sandpaper. I've used this single piece, which is a round piece, it's folded up. 
on the last four or five chainsaws. This shit is awesome. It's a little more pricey. Uh, get various si or various grits to fine all the way to as rough as you need it. Um, you can't spend up to $20 on good sandpaper, but it will last you forever and it will last you so you can use it on other um, uh, projects, things like that. So definitely it's worth its weight in gold automotive sandpaper. Okay, let's get into more of the paints and things like that. Here, well, we'll get in that in here in a second. <clears throat> now, if you have never made a mold or a cast or anything, and you're like, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to get my stuff, you can go to Michael's, you can go to Hobby Lobby and pick a lot of the stuff up that's real inexpensive. Um, there is some really, really good stuff out there, but it's really, really expensive in comparison. Like right here, you can see this is a mold for one of my caps, one of my tanks. Now you can buy this rubbery stuff at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. You can cast anything you want, make a flashlight. If you're a perv, that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, this rubbery stuff works great. I love this stuff. I, and most of my molds are from this, this kind of stuff. And when, when you make your cast piece in there, just pop it out, just pops right out. Um, and then talking about casting. Now, same thing, you can go to Michael's or you can go to Hobby Lobby and pick this up. It's, I think it's uh, less than 20 bucks. It's a two-part resin that you use, um, you know, one-to-one -one scale uh, uh, <clears throat> mixing, and you can make any piece that you need, say a grill or you need a muffler. This stuff works just fine. It works great. So if you have a Michael's or Hobby Lobby app, I suggest to use that. You can save a lot of money um, because I think together the rubber stuff in this, I think it would be forty dollars together, unless you have the app where you get like forty percent off, sixty percent off, things like that. If you've never done that before, <clears throat> another thing: if you're at Hobby Lobby, because I've only seen the Hobby Lobby, I don't have a box anymore, but it's Milliput. Now this is Milliput. It's a two-part, like a clay, and it's very workable. You can get it wet. You can sculpt it. Um, let's say you did a little miscut on your top or you need to fill in a crack or something. You just mix this together in your fingers like clay and just fill it in, wait overnight, sand it down, good to go. Uh, I don't suggest to use Bondo for filling in big holes because Bondo needs a backing. Um, Bondo can crack out if it does not have a backing. And talking about Bondo. Oh crap. Automotive Bondo. This is what I use to make a nice fine top when I make my tops. I actually, this is the final coat that I use before paint. Um, if you've never worked with Bondo, Bondo really cures quickly. Uh, it's, this is what you get with it. You get your, you know, it's like a gray filler mixed with your hardener. Basically you want a golf, golf ball size piece here, or out of here, and then just a straight line across it, mix it together, be quick, and then put it on with putty knives. You're gonna need putty knives, and then let it dry. It takes maybe 20 minutes tops to cure, and then you can start sanding. So you can actually do a whole top, numerous coats, um, and get it done in, in an hour or less. Um, another thing you're gonna need, just to have needle nose pliers. For anything, these are just a nice thing to have around, period. You're gonna need them. So you need needle nose pliers, go to a pawn shop, get them from there. Um, another thing, when you're cutting the body, let's get into talking about cutting the body. Let's say um, you want as many tools or options. One option is you can buy like a little hand hacksaw. These are great, but just to warn you, see how that's bent? They can bend up on you, so make sure you get enough, enough replaceable blades. It's like $7 to buy this. Let's say you don't want to fuck around with that. Get a Dremel. Now this is just a Walmart hyper tough $20 special. It comes with a bunch of different fittings and things like that, different kind of grinding stones. It all comes together. One thing you want to get though is the actual Dremel attachment like this for the cutting blades. They have these little bat symbols on them. They are incredible. They are the best thing they've ever come out with. And I use only those because they're good the attachment with the blades can be a little pricey up to upwards of twenty dollars depending on where you buy them 
But yeah, this little hyper tough works great. You don't have to go with a super expensive uh, Dremel. Uh, Dremel brand is quite expensive. That one with that whole kit was $18. So you'll save a lot of money. Um, you can, there's an option you can get a little wrench, a little crescent wrench if you really need to. I suggest it just to have, get it at a pawn shop for a buck. Okay, let's go to two part epoxies. Now this is the two part epoxy I use and it's called, it's the Goop brand, it's Superman epoxy paste. This stuff is incredible. Um, it can actually back up a bolt so you don't have to back it up with a tool to tighten something down. This stuff will actually, it's that damn tough. It's $10, I've only found it at Aces or Ace Hardware, but if you can find something very similar, uh, it'll be in the department with glues and other epoxies like plumbing epoxies. But this stuff is awesome. If you need to use it, of course. Okay. Now, another thing for the cutting tools. Let's say, especially if you're doing inner brackets, the Dremel can cut thicker metal because you're going to need to cut some thick metal. I don't like to do that because it takes too damn long, so I use an inner tool. This is my die grinder. That's what I use to cut all my heavy duty metals. You can use the Dremel, but you're gonna use the crap out of a lot of those blades and you're gonna wear out that Dremel. If you can use this, or uh, if you have a parent that has something like this, have them help you. These are handy, they're quick, but if you're not comfortable with them, don't use it. Cause you can hurt yourself. I've had a blade break off and whiz past my head one day. And I was like, eh, I already got that, so it doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> let's go, let's talk about paints. I always go with the Rust-Oleum 2X cover. If you got a plastic body, make sure the paint says it's for a plastic, for plastic, for a plastic bond, or bonds of plastic, like right there, it says bonds of plastic. If you get a cheap paint that doesn't say anything about plastic, and it's like a, a really strong enamel, like an automotive enamel, it can eat the plastic and it can warp it. Do not use that application on plastic. Make sure you get something that says plastic. And this Rust-Oleum 2X cover is great. That's all I use. Here's a satin clear, satin colonial red. This is if I do an Evil Dead 2 top or an Army of Darkness top. That's what I use for that. For the bodies, of course, I match it up with a satin apple red. Same thing. Make sure it's satin. Don't get the vibrant freaking glossy crap. You're going to have too clean of a damn saw. None of them were super glossy. Remember that. I beat that in everybody's head, I think, I don't know how many damn times. Um, another thing, if you're doing Ash versus Evil Dead, remember, I've talked about this before, when you cut your side handle, I always do a middle foot tip, sand it down, and of course, there is no, all the, uh, basically, the, uh, it's nice and smooth on top, but then you got the texture on the side of that handle. What I do to texture everything is I buy this stuff. It doesn't matter what color, because you're gonna paint it black anyways. And this is like a real sandy texture. So once it's all done and ready for paint, I'll be very sparingly with this and put it on the handle to give that nice texture again and then paint it black and it's done. Um, and this is Rust-Oleum. I'm not a big Rust-Oleum. Well, is it? Yeah, I don't like Krylon. I hate Krylon. Yeah, Rust-Oleum's really the only way I go. And they want to sponsor me too. Send me some free paint, bitches. Now you guys are great. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, make sure it's that sandy texture if you're doing an Ash vs. Evil Dead. You'll, you'll love the result at the end of the day. And then you just paint it black, whatever black you have. Not Krylon. Um, another thing, this is just a suggestion. Flex Seal. Now you can say, Brent, what the fuck are you doing with Flex Seal? What are you doing? Why is Phil Swift in your hand? Well, because now when I do my inner handles, I used to use like a electrical tape, things like that for grip. Now I, for my inner handles, I use Flex Seal. It works fantastic. Jason Wade Cox has a chainsaw with the Flex Seal handle. Um, it gives a nice grip. It's really good. This shit's a little expensive. It can run up to 20 bucks, but it's worth it. You'll use it, trust me. And you just put a layer on, let it dry, and just layer it on as thick as you want. Uh, when it comes to Doing your handle, I mean, whatever finish you got. This one is that golden oak that I use. I love the golden oak. Um, just ranges from, you know, 
five to 10 bucks, depending on how big of a thing you get. This is mini wax, I love mini wax. Works great. And last but not least with the paints, my Martha Stewart silver metallic. This shit, is, Martha knows her shit with paint. It's great. Um, and also the folk art, satin black. This is pure black, New York pure. Um, this is what I use for all my weathering. Uh, remember, it's got to be multi-surface. Do not get an indoor one because it will, you'll, it, it can wear off just touching the damn paint. So you want a multi-surface that does not come off. It saves you time on sealing things up because when you seal things up, um, especially the chainsaw body, if you do the whole body after that's done, then you lose that different look of uh, the contrast of the grit versus the red paint. And you want that contrast. You want it to look real like it, it's not, you don't want it all to be the same sheen, basically, is what I'm saying. And one of the most important things that you're gonna need a drill with a bunch of drill bits. <clears throat> a bunch of drill bits. Do not go cheap on drill bits. Um, the best ones you can get that I've found are cobalts. These are titaniums, I think. I prefer the cobalts. They are really, really strong, um, especially for pilot holing. Um, if you're messing with stainless steel, let's say you're doing an Evil Dead 2 uh, uh, wrist clamp, uh, cobalts will just go right through them. Um, titaniums, they're not as, not as good, but they're good. But yeah, you definitely need a drill. And then one more option. Oh, here's the goop stuff. It's so a one-to-one, you know, one-to-one -one mixture. It's good stuff. Um, one more option. You don't have to do this. This is what I do. <clears throat> I got my black sand for $3. This is black sand. It, it's, it's really, you know, shiny. It's like gunpowder. Um, I always paint it black after I install it. Um, and, oh, I almost forgot. Um, when I use, when I use, put in the grit for glue, you can go with a cheap glue, it doesn't matter, just make sure it won't flake off. A lot of times this GO2 glue for the grit inside of the uh, pull string assembly <clears throat> works great. Um, it's very forgiving, easily wipe, you can wipe it away. It's got a longer cure time than super glue. Don't use super glue on the grit, you're gonna regret it, don't use it. Use something like this, you can even go with a nice Elmer's. If it's something that's not gonna be touched, as long as it sticks, that's all that matters. So, GO2 glue is about the same as the other super glues. Um, I wouldn't use this to really hold a lot of anything load bearing because you can and you can't. You gotta kind of weigh out your options there. I mean, if it's something that's super load bearing, no. If it's uh, like I've used this to install chains on bars, works great, no problem, works good. But that's it. Um, but yeah, you can pretty much. You know, you're gonna reuse a lot of this stuff. You're not gonna use everything, uh, I mean, the whole thing on one chainsaw. So, you have a lot of different options. I haven't covered nuts, bolts, things like that. That's just random things you're gonna have to buy. Um, if you wanna get super accurate with nuts and bolts, especially if you're going with one specific chainsaw, like my new Ash vs. Evil Dead, I'm going very, very specific with one. And I got new screen caps for it, and I had to actually order, uh, these certain weird ass bolts that I can't find anywhere over here that's in metric. I can only find them in American, but the thing why I need them in metric is the nuts, there we go again, the nuts on American uh, bolts are wider. Now metric, they're skinnier and taller, and that's what I need. And so I had to order them from China. So I'm waiting for those, it's no hurry on them, waiting for those to come in. But guys and girls and people, that's all I got. That's a lot of the stuff I use. I don't know if I forgot anything, but it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. But I'm telling you, find these off of QVC. They are amazing. They will cut metal like it'll cut a banana. So until next time, you guys stay groovy. Sorry, I forgot to say one more thing. I forgot to mention one more important thing you're gonna need, especially making your tops. Clamps. You're gonna need clamps, little clamps. You're gonna need big clamps. These clamps are nice, especially when you're installing the sides of your top to your top piece. Just clamp it down, it's a nice wide grip. These are, 
how much are these? I think they're between $10 and $20 a piece. Don't go cheap on clamps because I've gotten some Harbor Freight cheapies and they suck. Um, like clamps like this. Get a shit ton of clamps. Telling you. And a ruler. I use a yardstick <clears throat> for measurements. This is the one, like, if you look down here, all these different marks, these are all marks for measurements for building chainsaws. That's what I use. You can use a ruler. I have a ruler, I just don't use it. But yeah, get clamps. You're gonna need clamps. You're gonna need them. Um, you get, spend the money, get some good clamps. I'm telling you. And you can see this has tape right here. And it actually has a piece of foam underneath it so I don't mar one end up. Like one will be on the bottom, one will be on the top, and just clamp it down. Works great. All right, guys, stay groovy.